I was very pleased to have Danielle uh, uh, call me uh, talk about this. To my mind, this is the key element for mineral development in this country for a long time, for the next considerable time. I look around the room and I see a lot of people within my broad age demographic, older, uh, and then I see actually a few more young people or students and, and other younger people. And it's going to take you, along with what's left of our years in this business, to come to some uh, comprehensive manner at looking at consultation and engagement with uh, Aboriginal communities in this country. Because it's going to take that long to figure it out. I, hope, I hate to be depressing, but but it's not, uh, it's not a magic thing. There's a, you know, most of the time when I come to the TGGG, I come with like a lot of my colleagues, I'm looking for a tool, you know, something that, uh, something that uh, a person making a presentation is going to provide me with another key piece of information for my profession, for developing the next project or looking for the next project. And I count on this community to actually ask probing questions and, and give me a broader uh, picture of what that tool can be applied to. So I'm hoping today for that same sort of discussion either later on or during this meeting to uh, bring out more details about what's going to be presented uh, to you all uh, by our speakers and panelists. You know, in, pre in preparing this conference, we did hear some comments from some of our colleagues that uh, maybe the topic wasn't rele relevant to the TGEG. But there isn't one of us here that doesn't work in a place in this country that doesn't have that aspect of, uh, or that component of work to be undertaken. Uh, and whether or not we feel it's our role, our understanding of it within anybody's organization is a critical element to having any project succeed. We've been in charge, you know, most of us, people like me that seem to have a new job every four to five years. Uh, of on short notice of going into work on projects or being given the control of a larger group of, of, of projects and exploration things in a, in a very short period of time and finding whatever bag of hammers is located and having to pick up and sort that up. And it, it is, in terms of the environment, in terms of just exploration, certainly in terms of our, our interface with Aboriginal communities, picking up and starting from scratch as a new individual in any of these relationships is very, very difficult. And at some point, hopefully, we'll have some common framework that we can look at and participate with. One of the things that's a pet peeve of mine and with, in, in industry meetings, and it's not just about Aboriginal communities, but communities in general, is the comment that I hear quite often that we're just exploring. To allow the exploration, or us as explorers, the idea that we can abdicate from certain components of what might be uh, a benefits towards the communities we're engaging with. And I don't think that that's an issue that we can deal with anymore. And to give you an idea, this country has over 900, I believe it is, exploration companies working in. And the statistic I had just a while ago was 617 Aboriginal communities in this country. So if you just multiply that, and add in another layer of overlapping traditional territories, you can see how that complexity is going to come to bear on, on all of our activities. And these communities have seen us as a group, as a sort of semi-faceless group, wander through their territories for 100 years. So we have a cumulative presence in the mind of Aboriginal communities. We don't have our current projects presence. So we need to change that type of, of approach if we're going to, to succeed. The other thing is, as we go on, as we work here in this province, as we're not working currently in this province with everybody sort of on the ropes waiting for the cycle to change and to get financing again, a lot of this work is going on around us. Uh, there, are, there, are, there continue to be groups working to elaborate better and, and more efficient methods of consultation, more tools uh, to, to try and, and, and work to that. Uh, and a lot of us are sort of sitting out the edge, kind of waiting for our next, uh, our next introduction into mineral exploration in the province when we have our vehicles for doing that have more money. Um, but even in this low ebb, again, a new layer of exploration work in Ontario, for example, is being done. And Bernie will have better statistics, I hope, than mine. But the last time I had one, there was a thousand work permit and plan applications in Ontario in the last two years, 46 Aboriginal communities. So each one of them 
is dealing with perhaps 25 or 30 of us as interveners in their traditional territories. So it's ongoing, even when we're not at our peak in terms of our financial performance in the sector. And I've always found this a bit of an interesting lag going overseas and coming back, and I've always seemed to come back to Ontario. And you know, my personal experience with consultations would have started maybe 25 years ago when I came back to Canada from Africa, having spent a lot of time discussing my activities with, with communities in Africa where our projects were located, and coming back to see a distance, a considerably larger distance between Aboriginal communities and the exploration sector, for example. Um, that was the period of time where government was very much involved in dealing with a consultative process and managing it. So there was the Tomogamy Land Caution at that point in time. There was what we called the NAN work permit process, which was where we supplied our work permit applications to the government. The government passed those through the Aboriginal communities, and if we didn't hear anything, we were good to go, which meant we had no particular direct involvement until we showed up near the communities, and they said, what application? And then there was a clear sign that the resources available to deal with us, even 25 years ago, was not immediately available to those communities. Um, you know, my impression at the time was that we just had, we were just a little further behind in talking to communities than I had felt we, I had been involved with in Africa. And 20 years ago, I was in Latin America, and people with guns were saying, we don't want you to work here. And we were working out very elaborate social contracts for our entry into positions, into places where we were going to work. And when I came back here 15 years ago, um, we were talking about the consultation in the bigger, and it was becoming an elastic word. It started to mean a whole lot of different things to a whole lot of different people. And we had, you know, uh, there was a lot of advice we were getting from legal, from our legal uh, brethren our, and from policymakers about just direct engagement. And then those same, in many cases, those same legal firms were saying, don't do that. Just stay within the framework that the, that, that the nations, the First Nations and the Crown have to deal with. So we still, and as we are somewhat similar to water, we tended to flow in the easiest place we could do it. Seven years ago, I was signing into law community engagements and obligations in Argentina. And seven years ago, the Platinex case was published where basically that crystallized a discussion around exploration agreements for many Aboriginal communities, the beginning of that process. And then last year, to go right back full circle, I, supplied, I, I applied for my first exploration work permit in Ontario since, I'm trying to remember when they were canceled, but probably more than a decade. And it comes with a requirement to have a consultation process. It doesn't define your process. It just says there has to be a consultation process. So now we're, so things about around consultation are starting to close up. And you'll hear a few of those things today about what government is doing, what our industry is doing. Uh, and you're going to hear how some people are working through those, either independently or, or in terms of service to us. Uh, and I think it's timely that we should be looking at it in a time when we have some moments to consider it, as opposed to trying to figure out where to spend all the money we've got from our last financing. So, um, and I'm still curious, it's still a curious thing to me to see how much of an issue this really is, and yet we don't have we haven't dealt with it as a sector. I mean, it only took two years to sort out what we should do after BRIEX. We didn't all like it, but we came about meeting with the, with the investment community and with the industry a way to bring ourselves forward as a legitimate and clear respondent to our investors and to our communities. Maybe it's because it's taking so much time uh, but I think the risk to our investors year over year in terms of delays 
for consultation or lost opportunities because of lack of consultation are going to cost our investors more. So I think it's a very important thing that we have to consider is how we approach facilitating that, that, that arrangement. They're going to use the word for the first time tonight, the arrangement with Aboriginal communities, how we consult and engage with them. And we have a, a number of speakers uh, for you today, mainly talking about those general, those, those pieces that have come into play when we're considering the span of exploration and development uh, uh, with regards to consultation. And I didn't want the government to be left out or to be the, the back end of a conversation, so Bernie's going to keep, keep us grounded in the fact that government does work with industry on the, on, and prepares the way for consultation. He's going to talk about an initiative here in Ontario. Uh, and then uh, in the, uh, after that, um, um, Sheridan Barnett, who I'm going to interview, introduce just now, will be, uh, will be moderating a panel on uh, agreements and relationships. Uh, and I do, again, for all of the people who've come to present and participate, I am very thankful for your presence.